The PC behind me has one major problem and that is it doesn't boot. So in today's video, I'm going to try and troubleshoot it and I'm gonna try my absolute best to try and get it running as, yeah, I need a new test bench, so I need it running. So just to confirm, it's not booting even into the BIOS, so this PC needs some fixes. The first course of action I recommend when your PC is not booting is clearing your motherboard's CMOS. Essentially what this does is it totally resets all BIOS settings to the factory default, and maybe if there's an incompatibility or something along those lines, resetting your CMOS may fix it. It's a very quick and easy fix. All you have to do is find your CMOS pins on your motherboard and short them for around 10 to 15 seconds with something like a screwdriver. Okay, that should be long enough. So yeah, that hasn't worked. If you know your PC has integrated graphics, you could always try and bypass the graphics card by trying to load from your iGPU. And all you do is just put your HDMI or your display port in your motherboard instead of your GPU. So let's see if this works. And yes, that hasn't worked. There is one thing I could do and I could just take out the 6700 XT altogether. Maybe that's causing some sort of incompatibility. I've seen it happen before, but I'm pretty certain this GPU is fully working. I tested it not too long ago and it worked great. Video up there, by the way, or there. But yeah, it's shouldn't really be causing the system to not even boot. So let's take this GPU out and see if it will fix it. I'm, to be honest, I'm thinking it's not going to, but it's always worth a try. So let's see if it will boot with just the integrated graphics. And to be honest, I'm not expecting this to work. Yep, as we can see, Still no signal. So I've tried clearing the CMOS and I've tried changing the graphics card admittedly to the integrated graphics to no avail. So this leaves me with a couple of options. I could try changing the memory in different memory channels using one stick at a time to see if I get a boot. But to be honest, I don't think that's gonna fix it because I used to daily these Viper modules in my main PC even last week and they were working fine. But I sort of have a hunch as to what's going on here. The Ryzen 5 8600G does require a BIOS update to run in B650 or even an X670 motherboard because it's a newer processor. And from what I've seen online, Gigabyte's QFlash Plus, which is the way of updating the BIOS without memory or a CPU, is very, let's say, spotty at best. It doesn't really work that well. So here is what I might just do. I've ordered a Ryzen 5 7600, which should work straight out of the box. And if that boots up just fine, that basically kind of confirms my suspicions that the 8600G is either defective, which I don't think is the case, or QFlash Plus hasn't worked with updating the BIOS. And before you say anything, I followed all the instructions on the Aura's website to a T and it still doesn't work. So what I'm going to try now is try one single RAM stick in different memory slots, but to be honest, I don't think that's gonna fix it. And after that, I'm going to try and put the Ryzen 5 7600 in and I suspect it's going to work. So the RAM trick didn't work. So what I'm going to do now is change the CPU to the Ryzen 5 7600, just because I've got it on hand. So I may as well just swap the processor and I've got a hunch it's going to work. get the thermal paste off of this. If you ever have to replace a CPU, make sure your case is flat on the ground. You don't wanna be working against gravity with this because yeah, you'll end up dropping a CPU or bending a pin on the board or something like that. It's more likely to happen. So just flatten your case to the ground and you'll be okay. Checking for bent pins and this AM5 socket looks perfectly fine. And in goes our Ryzen 5 7600. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. I'm not going to bother with a cooler just yet, just to see if the PC boots, but as long as you don't stick around in the BIOS too long, it shouldn't really be that much of a problem. But the CPU is definitely heating up. 
it's definitely receiving power. I'm just hoping we get into the BIOS. Yeah, the CPU is getting much warmer than before. Come on, give me a display out. So, okay, I'll put a CPU cooler on. Maybe it didn't have enough time to boot without it getting too hot or something like that. But the way it's looking, it's not going to work. Maybe the motherboard's dead. I'm not sure. Well, that doom and gloom was very short-lived because it is now in the BIOS. This error message is usual for your first time boot or if you've changed hardware. So I strongly believe it is down to a motherboard incompatibility. So now I'm just going to re-download the BIOS and reformat my USB just to make sure there's no incompatibilities there and I'm going to update the BIOS the sort of the regular way where you're actually got a CPU and RAM installed so that seems to work best as QFlash Plus from the looks of things is either very picky with which USB you've got or it's just not a very reliable way of updating your BIOS, so that is to be known. So I'm in the BIOS and it's now updating to the latest version which was launched earlier this month, which is February. So there we go. The BIOS is now updated to the latest version, as you can probably tell from the updated UI, but all seems to be working well, apart from two sticks of memory aren't working for some reason, but more on that in a sec. I have both good news and Bad news. Good news first, the 8600G is working totally fine now, for the most part, more on that in a bit. So it was indeed a BIOS incompatibility and this CPU seems to be working just fine. And the bad news is this PC will only boot with a single stick of DDR5 memory installed for some reason. It doesn't matter where it is in the four of the slots, it will boot, but as long as there's two, in any memory channel so if they're right next to each other in channels a or b it won't boot for some reason this tells me it's a motherboard issue and that's because both processors had the exact same problem so i doubt it's a memory controller issue and both sticks of memory work because you can take one out and then put the other one in and they will work as long as there's just one installed, which is just one of the weirdest behaviors I've ever seen with a motherboard. So this motherboard is going to need to be replaced because single channel DDR5 memory isn't ideal, no matter if you're on Intel or AMD. So that's a bit annoying considering this was a brand new motherboard. So to say I'm pretty disappointed is a bit of an understatement. And I know Aorus and Gigabyte are better than this as I've used multiple of their motherboards in the past. I do think this is a bit of a one-off if I'm honest. So I believe this is down to the motherboard. The RAM is totally fine as I was running it in my main PC not too long ago with no issues and both CPUs have the same issue which they kind of don't because it's not the CPUs and that means it's basically just the motherboard. The only way I can know for sure though is if I get another one sent out to me which I should be over the next few weeks and then we'll finally get this PC built and see if it was indeed the motherboard. Not quite yet, hold your horses for a bit because I've managed to get this PC to boot with two sticks of memory running in dual channel and I've also got AMD Expo to work as well. Essentially, this is my hypothesis. I think the motherboard does in fact work totally fine, but it doesn't want to play well with the Patriot Viper DIMMs I was using beforehand. I checked the QVL, which is the qualified vendor list for the memory modules, and the Patriot Viper DIMMs I had aren't compatible with this motherboard, or at least they're not on the QVL. But then again, neither are the crucial DIMMs that I'm using, and they're working just fine. So I'm just going to knock it down to some weird memory incompatibility, as the motherboard seems to be working totally fine now, at least in the BIOS, and I'm guessing Windows and every other program is going to work totally fine. But I am going to try and source another 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 memory as I want the 64 gigs back in my main PC. 
And also, I know that Patriot memory is totally fine as well because it's literally working in my main PC right now. So it's got to be a weird memory issue slash incompatibility. So I did what I set out to do and that was to get this PC booting and working and it seems to be working just fine now. So I'm going to install Windows and everything like that and then just swap the RAM out at a later date. If you want to see some more PC gaming videos, there will be two up there and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.